Hi friends, I'm going to make a quick little video today to show you how to get the uh, Monkey Bread software UDP sender plugin integrated into your FileMaker solution in order to send UDP strings to ETC family consoles and really anything that will listen to UDP strings. Um, it's a question I commonly get and so I figured I'll make a quick video and just show you the basics. So the first thing we need to do is go to the MBS website. It's monkeybreadsoftware.com slash filemaker, and we're gonna download the plugins. Um, I'm not gonna do go through the whole process of installing those plugins. You can do that yourself, but let's assume that you've got everything installed and ready to go. Before we try to integrate it into our own solution, I'm just gonna show you basically right from the demo file how this works. It's a very simple set of uh, scripts and fields. When you first open it up, this information will be blank or we'll have other information in it. But really, if we look at the database here, it's a single table with four fields in it. We have a target address, a port, the message we want to send, and then the results. That's really all there is to this database. There's a single table with these four things. Oops, discard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into EOS and I'm going to create a new show. I'm going to open up my settings. I'm going to go to show control, string UDP. I'm going to enable string receive. Rx is receive, I'm enabling that. And let's just put it on port 3033. So now EOS is listening on port 3033 for incoming UDP strings. Come back to live, and I'm going to open up tab 99, which is my uh, diagnostics window. This is how I know information is coming in. I'm clear that out, get my current IP address here. And I'm coming back to this FileMaker file. And again, all I've done is open the demo file. I haven't done any kind of special configuration within FileMaker, of course, other than installing the, the MBS plugin. Target IP, that's going to be the same thing that I have here in my EOS. On this particular case, it's the same machine. I don't know on PC if it works properly with uh, 127.001, but on Mac, you have to use your actual IP address, even if it's on the same machine. Uh, port, I said 3033, and the message. So the message can be any kind of uh, UDP string. There's not really an official list of what EOS listens to. You can do most UDP strings formatted as OSC strings, um, but if I want a simple command line type thing, I'm going to first specify a user number. So I'm gonna say uh, open bracket U1, close bracket, dollar sign, it's the start of my command line, and then I'm gonna say chan one full full pound sign or hashtag. So pound sign is the enter. When I click send, if we look over here on my EOS command line, I now have channel one at full, and I've got, uh, received it, channel one full full. If I come back here to live, even though nothing's patched, I see channel one full. And so I can basically use this uh, for most console shortcuts. Channel 1 sneak, enter. Again, the pound is enter. When I send that, there it is. Uh, I can also specify other users. So right now my EOS is in user 1. If I specify this to user 2, and I come in here say chan 1 through 5, full, full, and send, you'll see those channels went to full, but it's not showing up on my command line because it's being sent as user 2. Um, so you get the, the idea of how powerful that can be. That's how I use it to send things in the background for channel checks and stuff like that if I don't want to mess up what other people are working on. In my particular app, I have it written so it defaults to user 99 unless you specify otherwise. Um, but you really, you can just specify it within that string right there. This result right here is something MBS creates. It just tells you how much data it sent to the console. Because we're using UDP, it doesn't send us any information back. It's not a TCP connection. So I'm only sending data in one direction, um, which is why I, I try to limit what I'm sending. So I make sure that the, all the information and packets get there on time. Anyway, so that's really it. Uh, so you have these four fields and then you have a script that runs. So this script, if I open up my scripts window here is a send script. It basically just checks to see if there's already a socket created um, which is something MBS does in the background. And if there is, then what it does, if, if there isn't, it'll create one. And if not, 
it go ahead it takes the information that I put into this message field and sends it as a UDP string. Okay, so the next step in all of this is figuring out how to take that demo solution that was offered by MBS and integrate that into my FileMaker solution. So what you're looking at right now, right now this is PMP, the Paperwork Management Portal uh, that I've created. Um, there's a whole bunch of things, but one of the, the best parts of it is its ability to communicate with the EOS. I'm still working on bi-directional communication. Again, right now, I'm only really using UDP in one direction. I've got a couple of things coming back in uh, via, via OSC and via UDP. Those will be in a future video one day. For right now, the focus of this is just sending information out. So really, if we, look, if we go in and look at my uh, database here, you can see there's a lot more tables in mine, um, all kinds of different information. But I have an EOS link table and you can see kind of hidden in all of these things here those same four table fields that you saw before message to send port destination IP and result they're all here and so what I'm doing is I'm going now if I go into my instrument data for example and I click on turn light on I come back over here oops, and you can see all that's really done is taking the information that I, I have in my table, so it had a channel number, and I'm turning it at full. I'm putting that information here into the exact same kind of formatted string that I had before. Channel 555 at full pound. If I scroll way down here, whoop, there it was. And you see it sent channel 555 to full. I just happened to send it on U3. So if I change this to U1, and I send it, you can see now it's posted to my command line. So you can really quickly see how powerful this is. And again, as long as you have the MBS plugins installed on your FileMaker installation already, all you have to do is copy paste the send script and make sure you retarget your various fields to your solution instead of the demo solution and you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so we've gone over basic command line things and how to send command lines on different users using UDP strings. The one other thing I want to chat about real quick is how to send Q labels and some other kind of labeling information. Um, using what we've already learned, you would think the logical thing would be to say, all right, well, I'm going to send the label key, and then I'm going to send this, and then I'm going to send that. And that's wrong. <laughs> um, again, there's not an official documentation of this that exists. It's kind of one of these things that's handed down from person to person. Um, I learned this part of the program from Jake DeGroote. Um, and if you search the forums deep enough, you'll find this, but uh, not always. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I've created a blank queue here in EOS. You can see Q1 behind, and I've created a Q1 in my FileMaker database. Again, this is just a database with a bunch of different fields, all the same fields that we have in EOS. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to label this Q1 label here. When I leave that field you can see it sent that label over to EOS, which is great. That's what I wanted. But if we come back and look at the actual UDP string, we see it looks a lot different from what we've been looking at before. We have some things the same. I've got user, sending on user three, because that's what I had specified before. Um, but the difference here is I'm choosing to edit target. And then what am I editing about it? I'm choosing to edit the label and the queue and then the target number. And so you see, well, this is Q1. Why does this say 10,000? So for some reason, the way this works with EOS is you multiply whatever target number you're trying to edit by 10,000. So because it's Q1, it actually says 10,000. The next two fields here, it's one because that's the list number. Um, if it was, if it didn't have a list, so let's say it was, I was editing a group label, something like that, I'd put a negative one there. If it was in list two, I would change that to a two. Um, and then this next thing, negative one here, this is my part field. So negative one means there's not a specific part. If it was, let's say, Q1 part 10, I would change this to 10. And then my label all is just plain text right here. So if I want to change this and I say uh, new label and I send that, see it replaces what I had with that. Um, so again, specifying a user number, edit target, label, Q10,000, specifying list one, no specific part, and then the label. If I wanted to come in here and say edit, I could do the same thing with my notes field and send it. You see now it has a note applied here. I don't have that field turned on in EOS, but if I turn it on, see it's the same thing there. So I use this a lot in my program where 
Uh, I will send labels over based on what the queue is doing, so blackout, et cetera, et cetera. And then, especially if I have an inexperienced board op or perhaps a stage manager uh, who's not used to running the console, I'll send over the queue line or the page number or something like that in the notes field. So it's just more information that w uh, about what could be there. If I was typing this all into the console, I probably wouldn't spend the time to do it. But because most of that information is already in my EOS queue sheet in PMP, it really doesn't take any extra time to go through and, and send that information over. Um, so again, this is a one by one thing. I've, I've written scripts that, that go through and send my entire queue list at once. And really all that is, is it's a looping script that sends one at a time over and over. Um, and that's really it. So if you, I, I'm sure there's lots of questions about this. Ask them in the comments. If something was unclear, I'm happy to answer. Um, I will do a more in-depth video on exactly other parts of the integration that I have going on, but really it's all boiled down to this. I've got my four fields. I've got a message, a destination, and a port, and I send that information over. Um, again, all possible because of that MBS uh, plugin. So if you, again, have any questions, please reach out, and thank you very much.